Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, I wanted to discuss drop in range. So I have had, um, this is my second Model 3. For those of you that don't know, I have, um, I've had two white Model 3s. My first one was a 2018 long range rear wheel drive Model 3. Same white color as this car, same black interior, although not the updated interior like this one. This is a 2022, or excuse me, 21 uh, Model 3 Performance. So it's all wheel drive with the performance pack. I got the same white color, partly because I like white cars and um, partly because I use this, this car for visiting clients for my business. <clears throat> I do in-home appliance repair as my, my primary line of work. And I use this car to visit clients and it uh, it just looks more professional to show up in a white car. I wanted to get red, but white just has more of a corporate professional look to it. Uh, this car is um, all-wheel drive, again, performance Model 3, very fast. Uh, rated 0 to 60 time is 3.3 seconds or something. I've timed it anywhere from 3.4 seconds in less than ideal conditions up to uh, or down to I've seen 2.97 seconds and that was at 100% state of charge with the battery at a uh, perfect temperature and, uh, and on fresh tarmac and I've seen it twice twice back to back but I've not been able to uh, to repeat it anyway that's not what this, this video is about. This video is about my range. So you can see I'm at 100% state of charge and it says 287 miles. I've been driving a little bit, 286 now, uh, at 100% state of charge. And my car only has 26,000 miles on it. And up until very recently, it was charging to 300 miles. Now, when I picked this car up, Oh, uh, what was it now? 13 months ago, I believe it was January of 21, or excuse me, July of 21, and it is currently the end of August of 22 when I'm recording this video. I, uh, I a full charge though the car was rated at 310, showed 307 on the the uh, the gesso meter there at the top of the screen. All right, so we are at 100% charge. Let's see how many miles it it shows. 307 miles at 100% state of charge. And I know that that, that isn't 100% accurate, a way to judge true battery capacity. Nevertheless, it's there, and it doesn't float as much as other cars. For instance, the way Mini Cooper does it, as well as some of the other EV manufacturers, the the rated miles of driving versus the battery pack percentage varies wildly with each drive. So if you use the air conditioning and drive the car hard on the previous charge, the next time you charge it, it will show a pretty dramatic drop in estimated miles on a charge. And Teslas aren't quite like that. They, uh, they do take certain, certain parameters into account. Uh, one of the more recent software updates actually states that in the notes it states that the car will now take weather and and other things into account when estimating your range but uh teslas for the most part at least my experience i put 110 plus thousand miles on my last car i've got 26,000 miles so far in this car my experience is that the 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 rated miles versus charge percentage doesn't fluctuate much on a Tesla. I mean, it's pretty rock solid. Uh, maybe that's because I drive the same amount all the time. I don't know, but it's pretty consistent. And I bought the car. It showed 307 as it's when it was brand new. 307 was its estimated full charge range, which is typical. The car is rated at 310. My last car was rated at 310 and showed 306, I think, the first time I charged it to 100%. But this car was at 307 when I picked it up, and then almost immediately, it would charge to 100% at 300 miles of range, 300 to 302. I don't charge it to 100% often, admittedly, uh, because I don't do a lot of out-of-state travel. Uh, I, uh, I happen to live in northern Illinois, 
and uh, today I'm driving up into uh, I'm driving toward Milwaukee Wisconsin so about an hour and 20 minute drive away and uh, so I charged it to 100% but the car has been charged to 100% maybe eight times or something since I've owned it and again always when I drive out of state well I bought the car it charged to 307 and then it pretty rapidly went down to 300 to 302 on a full charge I actually mentioned this in a previous video at one point that I it had charged to that and um, you lose just a tiny bit of charge couple percent almost immediately after you pick up an EV well it it had hovered at 300 miles of range you know for the last handful of times I charged it to 100% but then all of a sudden overnight I charged it to 100% and it was at 288 miles of range 100% state of charge which is reading as 288 miles and uh, just as a test I've charged it to 100% about once a week since then and just so you know it's not good to to, it's, a, it's fine to charge uh, lithium battery to 100% as long as you don't do it all the time and as long as you discharge it down immediately after it hits that. You don't want it to sit at a, high, a very high or very low state of charge. So I want to get that off the table right away. But um, a few times lately, about once a week, I've charged it to 100% just to see what it would charge to and it's always at 288 miles of range. So I wanted to address that in this video. I remember uh, Kim from, at the time, uh, her uh, YouTube channel was Like Tesla. <laughs> and uh, she had noticed that her car had gone down, oh gosh, I think it was to 260 miles of range or something. And she did one of these battery cycles where she drove it way down to like 1%, then charged it all the way to 100%, and left it at 100%. You know, plugged in, charged for a couple of hours to make sure that the cells were truly all peaked at 100%, then drove it way down to like 1% again and charged it to 100% to calibrate the BMS. And in her case, she did get a lot of that back. And um, I, uh, I haven't truly done that here. There are a couple ways that you can balance the BMS. Uh, one way that Tesla recommends is to drive the car to somewhere below 50% charge. I think I drove mine down to like 28% or something and leave it sit for six or eight hours at a somewhat low state of charge and the car will eventually uh, get to a point where it will st uh, start to check the individual uh, state of charge of each of the cells. I did that several times but I have not driven it way down to single digit percentage and then way up to 100%. My type of driving doesn't really lend itself to that. I, I really have to go out of my way to uh, to do that type of thing, but I will try that. But I, I don't know that that's what's going on. I have a feeling that though it's not necessarily mentioned in the last couple software updates, I think that the last couple software updates have also added in a more true expected range whether it be based on the car's entire life cycle or what. I can tell you that for right now, let's see here. Um, I am at 266 watt hours per mile. Oh, I have more miles in the car than I thought. 28,602 miles, averaging 266 watt hours per mile. The car is rated from the factory at 310 miles of range, but that's based on a low, I'm trying to remember if that was 235 watt hours per mile or something like that. But it's the rated, uh, the efficiency of this car, rated efficiency, they expect you to drive very cautiously. Well, but again, this is a performance Model 3. And as a performance car, I'm not going to drive it super cautious. I'm definitely going to. Uh, I'm gonna get on it a little bit and um, oh let's see I have a notification for yet another software update so uh, 2022.20-8 software update is waiting to download so we'll uh, we'll have to check the uh, check the notes on that so I don't I don't 
drive this car aggressively all the time, primarily because I always have boxes and equipment in my car, being that I use it for work. But I will, on the weekends, on occasion, take everything out and drive it briskly. Uh, it, uh, it is a performance car. It's got 20-inch wheels with the low-profile tires, and uh, these are Pirelli P0 sticky track tires. So this car does not get the efficiency that they would that one would expect and that a uh, either two-wheel drive car would get or a car with 18 inch wheels and more efficient tires so it more than likely one of the latest software updates has now built into it an estimated range based on the the watt hours per mile that the car is seeing over its lifespan that would be my guess now there are some there's some comments regarding this online, but there seems to be no real firm data. Now, someone will correct me in the in the comments section on that, and I'd appreciate that. If there is some firm data on this, uh, let me know in the comments section. Maybe this video is superfluous. But what I wanted to do was to, uh, to calm people's nerves. And, you know, don't panic if you have a car that's, that is all of a sudden, you know, dropping in range by you know, whatever, a couple percent, uh, one percent is, is three miles. So let's see here, my car overnight dropped, you know, 13, 14 miles of range. So that would be, wow, that's 5%. Um, that is not, it's not that my battery is all, has all of a sudden lost 5% capacity. That's not the way batteries work. Uh, they don't do that overnight. You may notice if you're being very, very hard on a battery, you may notice that it will degrade more rapidly than other batteries, but you're not gonna go from you know, a certain percentage to within a week, it drops down by 5%. That's not true internal battery capacity change. That is the car's uh, algorithm mathematically calculating that your your range is that and so it's a recomputing of the data within the car's uh, pack and battery management system and giving you a different number so <clears throat> this video is basically I, i'm shooting this to calm people's nerves if you have a model 3 or any other ev and you see a sudden drop in range one thing is to ask yourself hey have i recently received a software update number two uh, ask yourself when truly was it the last time that you check the range uh, because if you don't check it for tens of thousands of miles then yes that could be true battery uh, capacity loss but normally when you see a loss that's that extreme if you want to call it that that's a marked loss over a very short period of time it's more of a software thing than a true battery capacity thing also as a side note this car is 26,000 miles on it <clears throat> my last car I put 110, 111,000 miles on that car over a two and a half, three year span of owning it. And that car was at, I believe, identical to what this car is currently. Uh, by the time I traded it in, it was showing 280 some, 286 or 287 miles of range at 100% state of charge. And again, that car was at 110 or over 110,000 miles. This car's at 28,000. So I don't, I don't think it's a capacity loss. I also, I asked a, uh, a Tesla service technician who uh, declined to be on camera, but I asked him, he was changing the spoiler on my car under warranty. I asked him, does driving these cars aggressively, if, does flooring it a lot affect the battery capacity? So he had explained it this way. <clears throat> he said, well, there are a handful of Teslas that have been drag raced quite a bit. Now there's a couple early model S's with the 18650 cells that had been drag raced a lot. And those cells eventually started to degrade and uh, you began to see it in the performance of the car uh, after being you know, drag race launched a couple thousand times. But he said these new 2170 uh, cells tend to not do that. He said, and <clears throat> He said the uh, you you would have to do it many 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 times like go to the track every weekend and drag race it you know a couple dozen times every single weekend for a couple years he said and even then he said it's it, it's different 
uh, there are a couple guys that have Model 3s that have shot videos on this. I'll see if I can uh, drum up a couple links, put them in the in the description below for you, that have talked about tracking their cars on a regular basis and how it has not affected the battery's performance at all. And again, for me, I've, I mean, I don't know, I floor the car, I don't floor it every day. I drive the car about 120 miles a day, 100, 100 to 120 miles a day. I don't think I floor it even once every day. Uh, every week it probably gets floored twice. Uh, generally it's because there's a merge coming up and there's a space and I need to get into it. Uh, you know, So this car isn't really driven aggressively. I've treated the battery well. I typically charge it to 80% each day and I don't discharge it below 20% almost ever. And um, so that's the history of my car and those are my thoughts on the battery capacity loss in case you're wondering. So if you have any comments regarding this, because I'm probably missing something, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. Uh, also, uh, the uh, Atlas mounts that swivel and, um, and pitch adjust are in stock and shipping right away. There's no longer a backlog. They typically ship within just a few days of orders. So if you want to order one, there will be a sale discount link in the description below. I think that is it for me for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've got a couple other interesting videos coming up. I have a video coming up on we've ordered another new EV. What is it? Why did we order it? Uh, I have an update video coming up on my wife's uh, Mini Cooper SE plug-in hybrid Countryman. Got a video coming up on that. We had a minor, uh, minor problem with that car. And uh, so under warranty, they're taking care of that for us. So keep your eye on the channel and expect a couple interesting videos in the coming week or two. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And as always, stay charged. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.